Hello and welcome back to the Popcorn for Dinner podcast. And welcome to Jamestown Base, Happy Valley, the Moon, Mars. We're going all over space today. And that's because we are finally doing our first full-length episode on a show that we really, really enjoy, but no one watches. So today we're talking about why you all should be watching for all mankind and why it's the best show that you're not watching. And why you should start it like right now on the biggest, brightest screen you can find. And joining me on this journey to the moon and back, it's one small step for man, but one giant leap for our friendship. It's Ayo. Ayo, how are you doing? Welcome back to the podcast. I'm doing very well, thank you, Bankode. I saw you thinking about that, whether it's the best show that no one is watching. Yeah, I did, I did, I did pause and think about that. Is it the best show no one is watching? It might be, though. It might be, because absolutely no one is watching yeah, this show. Yeah, no, just no one is watching this show. Which like, is ridiculous. <laughs> any other show, I could probably tell you that some people are watching it. Gilded Age, people are watching it. The Curse, like, Nathan Fielder has his fans that people are watching. He like, has a cult no, following. No one is watching this show. Um, but luckily, though, I did find one person. Angel, she's watching this show. She's going to be with me next week and the week after that, at least definitely, to cover episode six and seven. Um... We might do eight and nine. We'll see how things go. But it is meant to come up with the finale. So we'll obviously see all of that. Work. So we're going to cover four man at least for the next two or three weeks. And then the finale, definitely. So please, please rate and review if you're listening to this. If you enjoy for one man kind already, share this with your friends who don't know about the show. Maybe they'll watch it. Maybe they'll listen to this podcast. Um, quickly, just quickly, we've covered over the last few weeks, Invincible, Loki, Slow Horses. Please check all of those out. Check out our podcast on those shows. Um, December is going to be mostly Slow Horses and For All Mankind. And then we have some fun episodes planned for our year-end recaps, which will come out in January. Um, okay. Oh, yeah. Um, was Mrs. Maisel the last time you... Or was it the recommendation? That, that was a few months. Wow. That was a while ago. Was yeah. that... Was No. Did we do Oppenheimer before the recommendation? Oh, Okay. Actually, I don't know yet. Yeah, well, well, yeah. Open I would have been like, what, July? I was here. Yeah. Yeah, July. July August, early yeah. August. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, well, we do know for a fact that industry is coming back next year. So I'll, I'll wrangle you back for another. <laughs> you know what's funny? When you said run. industry, <laughs> you know, the first thing that came to my mind. What? Pretty Boy Diaz, that little baby doll he carries around as his child. <laughs> I've never seen this happen. You've never seen Pretty Boy Dio have like a little is a doy is a doll toy, a doy. A doy. That was that was, yeah. was that a mistake? Did you stop yeah, me into that? Yeah, it was a that? mistake. Yeah, <laughs> I, I did. I did. But you know, comedy. <laughs> um, it's a doy, and he calls it industry, and Chinasa is his mom. I have uh, never you, seen. Have you never seen? This? How have I never seen this? It's so funny. It's so funny. But yeah, when you said industry is back, that was the first thing that flashed into my mind. I was yeah. like, Oh wow. Uh, industry ah, is back. Oh, yeah, industry, <laughs> industry should be back sometime next year. Um, I don't know. I was thinking about it. And I, I feel like they should just aim for that. Like, I mean, unless the, I mean, what do I know? I'm not list. I'm not. Please, no one listen to me. But unless they push back the Emmys window for next year, I think they should aim for that that much April window. You get what I mean? Because like, yeah, lots of the shows have been pushed be back. Efficient. Yeah, because the, because of the strikes, they will not have. They'll not be done. That's what Dragon is summer. So, like, surely industry should just aim to, like, sneak into that. Unless they say, okay, we're pushing the Emmys window, which I doubt they will do because Emmys is a fixed time. Yeah. Even though this year it's pushed back. Actually, it's so confusing. I don't think they push back the window. I think the window stays, but maybe they the window The window stays. The window yeah. stays. I feel like, yeah, man, just go in there. Like, Interesting. What else could be competition? What's that, like, the bear? And I think the bear is in comedy. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. surrounded so, by frauds. <laughs> People love yeah, doing fraud. I think, I think doing they fraud. go for it, man. I think they just go for it. Anyway, let's talk about the show we're here to talk about, which is for all mankind. Um, Back hey, to give us for? a synopsis of the show. I was oh, literally you, about oh, to you were trying to get me. You're <laughs> trying to, you can't get me. I'm too well versed in this. Thank you. With your NASA shirt on. Oh, I was gonna, yeah, I was actually, I was gonna say, do you? Do you? <laughs> I did I mean, it for, the, like for this that. podcast. Thank yeah, you. But, but no one knows what the show is about, so no one cares right now. So well, no. yeah, okay. Um, oh, geez, I really... You know, I actually did not write a synopsis down because I was going to throw it to you to say. Yeah. Yeah. 
that. I can just imagine you panicking. <laughs> I uh, I'm not panicking. It's just like, I feel like whenever I describe this show, I don't do it justice. But For All Mankind is a sci-fi show only because there is both science and fiction in it. Um, which paints an alternate history of the world in which the Russians landed on the moon first. I.e., It wasn't the Americans that landed. I think they landed like a couple of months before the Americans landed in our real world timeline. And this kind of sets up a chain reaction um, across decades, for one, because America and Nixon are so intent on catching up with the Russians, they, um, they keep on investing in NASA and the space race never really stops. The Soviet Union power never stops, so the Soviet Union does not crash. Um, and then, yeah, it's just like a chain reaction of different things. And then it becomes a multitude of, of shows within it. It becomes a family drama, a space drama, a workplace drama, workplace a political drama. thriller. Um, yeah, I don't know. Was, was that a good enough description? It was okay. But it was okay. what Banky is describing sounds a bit boring. It's super exciting as well. <laughs> it's super exciting. It's <laughs> Yeah, it is an alternate history, but I think all the elements that he's just said come together in such an organic way that makes every episode, like every episode you, you don't really know what to expect. Like mm -hmm. they're telling a story around, or, you know, just set in this world. Uh, but it does follow a number of main characters. Uh, do you want to go through some of the characters now and try and pitch? <gasps> Actually, yeah. do you have a favorite? Uh, this was something, this is going to be something I was going to talk about later, but actually, um, I think at the risk, I, so we're going, let me just be clear. This is going to be a spoiler-free discussion. We're not going to give any spoilers. I think Ayo and I, at this point of recording, have watched up to, I watched episode six of this season, Ayo up to episode seven of I'm season four. Work. But we're not, going to, we're not going to spoil anything at all. So this is completely spoiler-free. I would say that as a whole, taking everything into account, my favorite character would probably be... <sighs> I was about to say Ed Baldwin, but I don't know if that makes me too go America, you go. Man. You man. <laughs> you absolute man. I should, let me make, Ed Baldwin is the main main character of the show. He's an astronaut. He's like, he, he, he embodies what you expect American astronaut energy should be like, if that makes sense. Like, he's like... <laughs> That's a great way to put it. He has like, go, so I don't know if it makes me feel too much like a man say he's my favorite character. Um... I need a shirt what? that says American Astronaut Energy. <laughs> American Astronaut Actually, okay. Because I have a quote from you. Because what I was going to mm -hmm. do, I was going to throw some quotes that we've... We've been watching this show since, I think, October, November last year. So we've been, we've been like, the first three seasons, like, three months or something like that. Maybe, yeah. maybe less. Do you want and to give some history on, like, why we started watching it and what that experience was like? And then you can start with the quotes. Okay, but you're not going to run away from saying who your favorite character is. Though. No, of course not. I've, okay. I'm ready to go. Um, so, I, so, Ayo and I, obviously, like, as you know, if you listen to us talk about this, on this podcast, you know that we kind of, like, we follow these things, right? In our presently, we know kind of the shows that people are talking about and the shows that maybe are, are doing well and, and, and things like that. And uh, For All Mankind first came out in 2019. And I was like, okay, whatever, it's a spy show, it's a sci-fi show. And I wasn't... Like, I'm not really someone that... Sci-fi is not something that drags me in. Mm -hmm. Like, if someone says it's a courtroom drama, like, I'm in. I don't even care mm -hmm. if it's good or bad. But sci-fi is not really something that drags me in. And then I was like, mm -hmm. oh, whatever. <laughs> Apple TV. Apple TV was so untested at the time. Untested, what are you yeah. Say? Sorry. It was one of the first shows, wasn't it? That yeah, TV I think it was in that batch of morning show. Yeah. And then it was the got, got subsumed by morning show. And nobody morning even knew show. about it. Yeah. Interesting, like what you said about it being a sci-fi show and that didn't really excite you because mm -hmm. like you don't really like sci-fi. On the other hand, I'm, I'm I love sci-fi, mm -hmm. but I read the synopsis and I was like, this is not sci-fi enough for me to get Fair. interested. You want like, you want sci-fi. Like, I you want to be science and I want to fiction. Yeah. <laughs> I want you to ask really, really deep questions about the human condition. You know, condition but just wrapped in wrapped in technology. Uh, so, yeah, I, I read the synopsis and I was like, nah, not for me. Let's yeah. watch the morning show. This should be good. Oh, <laughs> this should be good. Uh, we, it's funny because we started the morning show together, the same room. If we had started the <laughs> For All Mankind instead on that same day. <laughs> How would our lives be different? Our lives could what have does, changed. What does that alternate history look like? 
oh, well, for one, the space race doesn't end. Um, no, so, yeah, so and I think we heard, we're hearing, okay, like, this show, this show might actually be good. This is the better drama on Apple TV. That was season one, but I was like, ah, oh, whatever, I'm busy. Then season two comes out 2021, and people are like, oh, this show is actually picking up steam. And I, I, I just, like, it doesn't feel essential. It feels like, okay, whatever, that's just another good show that, like, yeah. is on is on the air. Like, there's so there's many shows so that I'm not many. watching that good. Then season three happens. And then I start seeing things from, like, the trades or, like, the Hollywood Reporter and Variety and stuff like, this is the best show on TV. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. how did we get here? How did yeah, we get jump, here in three years? The jump in the rhetoric around the show was ridiculous. Like, it was like, oh, this is a good show. And then season three hits and everybody's like, this is the best show on TV. Full stop. Like, we're not even like, going to qualify that. I was like, how did we get here? Like, yeah, it was not like, oh, this is the best show you're not watching. This is the best show yeah, with space. Yeah. Like, this is just the best show on TV. Like, just behave yourselves. And I was Period. like, oh, okay. Okay. And like, and I think, I think one day we're just like, you just had to say you're watching the show. And I was like, you know what? I've been wanting to start. Let me just start as well. And I started watching this show. And it's, I think I mentioned this in our recognition episode a year or so ago. It's the one show, and I say this every time, it's the one show where you can feel the jump within a season. Mm. Like in season one. It's Most times it's, a jump will be between seasons. You're like, oh, this show has stepped up a gear, whatever. This show literally jumped from like, between episodes five and episode six. That's just a run. I can't remember the exact episode, but like I know what happens in the episode, but I don't want to spoil. And it just becomes a much better show within the season, which is just in, an insane it's jump impressive. to make. It's impressive. It's so impressive. And it doesn't um, happen often. It doesn't happen maybe and I, ever. I think we went in going like, okay, we've heard that season one is okay, but season three is where we should like yeah, be so excited we're aiming for. for that. And I was like, what? I was like, season one is incredible. What's going on? With this guy I was like, you guys, this is the second half of season one. I was like, this is this is this is TV. What, what were you guys talking about? And then from there, it just keeps on ratcheting up the tension. One of my quotes I was gonna talk about is like, I just have like this show knows how to do space drama because like the space tension, the space drama is just like mm. always at an eleven. Um is that a good representation of, I think that's of a our great, history? That's a great, yeah, that's a great uh, recall or retelling of what happened um so what was the quotes okay so like i said so obviously we've had... we, were, we were watching the show at the same time or around the same time so we were yeah. talking to each other over whatsapp and also because episode, we're the only ones that watch the show that we know that watch the show so yeah, even if i go and search on twitter i can't really find the takes i need like <laughs> Like, when there's nobody in my real life to talk to about a show, I can go on Twitter and search and see things. Like, I did that for Foundation. Mm. But for this one, for fa- it's so funny. For Foundation, I actually went to IMDb comments, and there was there was an engaging discussion. Sorry, have, have you ever and tried Reddit? No, because, you know. <laughs> what? Nothing. No, 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 finish. I'm confused. I thought we were bad. we're boycotting Reddit now. They're trying to do something. Why are you boycotting Reddit? Why are you, why are you boycotting Reddit? Ah, uh, they came out earlier this year and they were doing some fuck shit. And then, oh, like, I didn't know they that. Were, like boycott Reddit, and then all the big Reddit threads were like posting. Well, some of them were. Is it John Oliver one? John Oliver, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I knew about that. I, I knew that tangential they were posting John Oliver pictures. Yeah. Uh, fair enough. Yeah. Okay. So I wasn't um, trying to promote them. Fair. Well, I don't on ready so there's an anti-promotion okay um but yeah i so was in the IMDb comments but i couldn't yeah, find yeah, anything about the show so we banky and i would text each other or whatsapp each other mm-hmm. while we're watching the show so the quotes i guess are coming from those whatsapp from those conversations yes i mean unfortunately some of our conversations were like about the phone or like facetime so i don't really obviously i don't have quotes but i just trying to get the, the quotes that i could get and so real life friends yeah, we are real life friends, not just podcast friends. And when you're watching season two, you said to me, I kind of hate all of the characters in this moon show. Her, man. <laughs> and I stand, I stand behind that, man. I'm stomping so, on that business. The, that's fair because the point of this exercise, we're going to ask you, like, what do you still stand on and what do you, like, maybe you've softened on? So do you hate all these characters? And... I, I kind of still do hate all the characters in the space show, apart from one. Now I have a baby that I love, which is crazy because we went on such a journey. But I'll say that. From, no, 
I kind of hate her too. You still hate her. Hate. So, so who can you hate that you went on a journey with? That's why, that's why I said Alida because you went on a journey with her. Okay, she's your ba- yeah. favorite character, the baby. No, she's not. Okay, who's your favorite character? Let's just, let's just go with that. Ed Baldwin's wife. <laughs> okay. Um, Karen. That's fair. I don't want to say her name because the name has connotations already. <laughs> <laughs> and she, I can't lie, she she was being a Karen. In, at some point. In, at some in, point. In, yes. in a lot of the early, in le, um, early in, the, in the story. Chan- she, was really, she was living up to her name. Um, but yeah, I, I really love Karen Baldwin. I think she's great. I think she's so, such a good character. We should mention that this show takes decades jumps between seasons. Yes. That's so season good. one would be like 69 and season two starts in 1979, 1980 kind of situation. Yeah. So a lot of characters come in and come out. There are so many characters on this show. You have the scientists, the engineers, the astronauts, the private sector, their family members. The this president. season we get the first president, yes. This season we get the first character that's actually not connected to anybody at all. So that seems like they're trying to build a whole new branch there. And I would say that I don't think... This might be recency bias, this might be me forgetting things. I don't think there's any character. There are only two characters, let me say, that I have hated on the show. And they are related without spoiling anything. Um and <laughs> do you know who do you know who they are? Tracy and No, I did, I I liked Tracy and Gordo. It's you that okay. didn't like Tracy and Gordo. <laughs> yeah, because you know me. You know I, I hated one nigga. I, I, no, I have I have all of this down. Uh, I would say that they're they're connected to Tracy and Gordo, though. Oh, oh, the children. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They are, and they're the only characters that I genuinely awesome. hated across every scene they were on. That's in, fair. Sorry, that's fair. Every other character, I kind of. Kids. Well, no, cause I didn't. I mean, once they became so Main season, characters. I see season two, two stroke three. Yeah, yes, from, four, from, from season two. Yeah. So, yeah. So I'll say that. So, like in general, that's why difficult for me to say who my favorite character is because most times when a character comes on screen, I'm I'm happy to see that character. That's fair. Me too. Or I'm intrigued to see what that character would do. That's fair. Me too. But then they immediately do something, and I'm just like, "Why are you being stupid?" Yeah. Oh, no. 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 So like, like yeah. Face, as in, I admit that something can be stupid. That's not even up for debate. It's just that, but I still like them as as characters. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, only two that I was like, oh my God, can we stop this storyline? Oh my God, I really hate everything about you and this character. <laughs> and like, not even in a way like, I hate you because like, the story wants me to hate you. Do you oh, get what I, I mean? What you mean. Yeah. Like, like you're a Lannister from Game No, I was just like, I hate you. Like everything about you is just bad. And I wish the writers never wrote the storyline into the <laughs> show. Kind of, kind of did. Um, so yeah, so generally I, so who's your favorite character? You said, oh, you said Karen. I told you. Yeah, Karen. Who's Bobby. your baby? That you've had a journey with. Karen Baldwin. <laughs> oh, so your baby is your favorite character? Yeah, she's my okay. baby. She's my favorite character. Okay. Um, we really went on a trip with her. No pun intended. I mean... To the moon you, and back. No pun intended. You did. You, yeah, you did, definitely. Yeah, I did, because um, I, I hated her for doing a number of things. <laughs> so, like, she's show. someone who I was like, I hate what you're doing. You're being stupid. But I still like her as a character. Does that make sense? Yeah. As opposed to other people where I was like, I hate everything about you and I wish you died. Fair. So kind of... It's, you know, so it... it's interesting. So the way they jump through... How do you? How did you like find that the first time it happened when we moved from season one to season two? Did you know it was coming before? I didn't, uh, know, I didn't know it was coming. No, I didn't know so it was you coming. Didn't, you didn't expect them to jump decades. No. Because it is quite... It's quite abrasive, isn't it? I think they jump between... They probably jump like six years, seven years yeah. between seasons. Maybe not not a full decade, but not like... like full ten years, but... Yeah, but season I, one, episode one, usually a decade before season one, season two, episode one kind of situation. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah. They, so if a season covers covers like three or four years, then maybe they will jump five or six in, in, in between seasons. In between. Um, I don't know. I, I definitely didn't expect it. And I, I can't remember who my emotions were. I think I was definitely I was like surprised. I was like, oh, so I'm just like, yeah. We've watched so much TV. I was like, okay, sure. What? Go on, go on. Show me what you want to show me. Like, I really, really like it though. Like, I look forward to the time jumps now because, like, first of all, you get it means you're probably going to get new characters. This is season four we're in, so some of the yeah. characters we started with are old now because mm-hmm. it is a forty year period. Um. So you get to see new characters and characters that were children become adults and become like main players, including people that 
Banky hates. Um, but what I also like is just watching the parallel technology mm. and all the things that happen because we're in an alternate history. Like, I think that's so much fun. Um, so they get email, but it's called D-mail. <laughs> and... Do you know why? Digital mail, I guessed. I don't uh, know. Uh, yeah. I don't know if it is digital. I remember mail. you like because I, I always think about it because I know you liked it. I remember when we were watching Maniac and you were like, "Oh, what makes this world different? Like, what did they not create in this world?" Or um, do you remember this when we watched Maniac, Jonah Hill and Emma Stone? No, I removed it from my memory. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't. What? It wasn't. I was kind of disappointed, and that anyway, was my boy. Point... You know? That was my boy. Who, Jonah Hill? No, the director. Um. Who was Dirk? Was it Carrie? It wasn't the Carrie, yeah. Oh, he has skeletons in his closet, man. Oh, oh no. Yeah, Capital. I think he has some. I think that's probably why he's completely out of. Don't hold me onto it, onto on True Detective. Are we can't. Is he so? I think he has him. some assault allegations in his closet. Again, if I'm wrong, yeah. But I, I don't know. I feel like I'm not really wrong. <laughs> anyway, whatever. <laughs> um. So, so you were just angry because of the quality of the show. Yeah, I don't remember Maniac negatively. I I do. <laughs> like but I don't that, remember. That's the thing. Like there's there's a bunch of shows that you remember positively that I remember negatively now. Even though I probably didn't hate them while watching. Did, yeah. But I don't remember them fondly. I, I mean, I, I think, think a surprising that... one would be Legion. Because I you remember don't it negatively. Remember Legion fondly anymore? No. Huh. I mean, it took a dive. <laughs> but I think I just tried to remember the. Good sorry remember the good times like the first two seasons i think something about me apart from certain shows that like i'm like this is a masterpiece and i'll think about you for the rest of my life or shows i'm like i hate every single thing that you ever did name one most shows are just like divide into good or bad and that's like obviously a very wide range of stuff but just like how do i feel when i think about that show good or bad and i'll just move on name one of the ones that you hate and should never have been made uh, let me think on that. I'll get back to you. Okay. Because there should be one. No, I'm not scared. I'm just there should be one. I just can't. Watch don't know, I can't guys. think of it. It's coming. Like I is at the tip of my tongue. I just can't. Um, say I can't think of. I can't think. Anyway, whatever. Um, what's the worst show I've watched in the last ten years? Huh. Anyway. Okay. Uh, something we mentioned about this show is that it's a very optimistic show. It is. Did we talk um, about that before? I think we talked about it when we did recommendations, but we didn't yeah. obviously go into it fully. I think it's a show that, a what speaking of the American spirit, it wants to like say what could be possible, like the best of America, right? The best of yeah. that whole American ethos of exploration and in innovation and going to the moon and and, and 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 whatever Aaron Sorkin's speech is in is in the third act of the of the film. <laughs> like, so it, I think I think it believes in that it believes that if we like work together and we put our head down, we can do things incredible like go to the moon and go to Mars and and, and stuff like that. So it's a very optimistic show. And I think it's tried to say that a lot of these things have happened and have led to advancements in gender equality and advancements in LGBTQI plus equality because like I said n Russia puts a woman on the moon and Nixon's like fuck that get me women on, on the moon and I think Let's that probably women on the moon. I think that was like decades earlier than women were allowed in NASA so that obviously that pushes the Amer at least in America the female equality fight at least in America a few decades so it's like all of those things and then there's an openly gay um, astronaut who obviously in the 90s, yeah, in the 90s, obviously, again, pushes kind of gender, um, LGBTQI plus conversations in America a few decades. So I think he has this very optimistic view of just, like, what could happen and what, if anything, I think, not again, not most part, but I think this season is the first season that is kind of looking at a rot rotten core. It is. In people that say. we like, not just in, like, government or bureaucrats, it's like, people that we, that we, not even, not people particularly, but, like, archetypes of people so like astronauts yes. or engineers or stuff like that not not particular characters now it's starting to look at some of what their rotten core could be which is a, a bit interesting um yeah so it's a very very optimistic show but also surprisingly not a bloodless show it is like, not it is surprising people die on this show <laughs> yeah it's Don't so get 
<laughs> I remember, I remember, and obviously, like we've said, it spans decades, so you expect that people are going to die. That's fine. But I remember, I think it was season two or season three. Someone just died in a plane crash, and I was like, "Oh wait, Bro, from where?" <laughs> that was just like randomly in like episode three or whatever. I was like, "Beginning of the episode happened? as well." Just straight up, just what what I mean, done. It, it's a, I think it's a, sh- and obviously it's a very, it's glossy, it's a beautiful show. I said in the intro, mm. like watch it on the biggest, brightest TV screen you can watch it on. It it's a beautiful show. Everything is shot so well. The moon scenes are great. The mar- everything is just so so like. I think because it has that kind of glossy and beautiful feel to it, we don't we don't associate it with like death. Yeah. But it's just like people oh, die. It's true. When the violence starts, it's always so striking. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I think it's because the show the show does it does it does a couple of amazing tricks. So the first one I think is and I think I said this to you over text, so I've forgotten exactly what I said. But man, it can do a pilot or a premiere. This show, yeah. One thing you're gonna get in every premiere is a great, a great set piece, set piece a great set piece. Set um, pieces are always so great. It's gonna do that, and then it's just gonna go straight into drama from there. And you you forget that that has happened. Like people refer to it as the big thing that happened at the beginning of the season, uh, you know, or in the beginning of this story that they're trying to tell the season. Yeah, but what happens in the day-to-day or the episode-to-episode is like more of the workplace drama, the family drama, which is a lot slower. And, you know, it's like, I guess some of the more, the more uh, slower-paced episodes of Breaking Bad. But then, in a flash, it changes. And it's super violent and like super... It's bombastic all of a sudden. Like you, you, it's always yeah. so shocking. It's always so shocking when they reel you back and they were like, this is where we are. Like, don't, don't get it twisted. But the trick, and I don't know if this is, again, this is, I think maybe we should caveat, we should know that we are people who have watched a lot of slow shows in our life, <laughs> like in looking at prestige of peak TV. So maybe it might be peculiar to just us. But like, those slow moments in between set pieces are so insanely watchable. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Like I think I think that's what we said when we were talking about it. Like the show yeah. is it is com is I've forgotten the, the exact words I said, but it's compulsively watchable. Like you you just keep watching it. The, these episodes range from fifty to seventy minutes. I don't think it's one that's less than fifty minutes. Mm. But then you just watch one and play the next one. And it's just like it just I don't know, it's just whatever they do, man, like they just know how to make that thing just flow and move it. And it almost even kind of has a, not procedural per se, but like... That was what I was going to say. Yeah, it's kind of structured that way. Like, it doesn't... Yeah. It's not necessarily like a Breaking Bad or a Mad Men where, like, this Mad Men is a bit procedural, but where the story flows from episode to episode, it kind of like, this is the episode where this happens. And yeah. Maybe that, will, maybe that will makes it watchable because you just, you don't feel like it, you're watching a two-hour story. You're just like, oh, an hour, and then we'll go on to another story, which could be next day or a week later. And it's just, yeah, I think that's a trick that it does to make all those little bits in between the set pieces so worthwhile. And again, the character, I think, I know you've had some problems with characterizations in the past, but I also just think like the characters are interesting enough to keep your attention and to keep you, even if you don't think maybe there's not enough depth to them or they're not as, they're not really going into these characters as much as you want. Like it's just always enough for you to be like, I like you, I hate you. I care about your wants and needs. I want you to die kind of thing where you're like, and nobody ever feels, at least to me, like a caricature. One, one dimensional. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. might have aspects of caricature-ness, but like they never actually ever feel Some like things are heightened. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, they don't feel like completely flat. Like, I don't, like this is not a character Even drama. The characters that you hate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think, I think they're not caricatures. They're just very annoying. <laughs> they're just yes. very annoying. Um, I also have that, and this kind of ties into your set piece thing. I have in my notes that like the show knows how to do it, make a character, give a character a hero moment. A moment, man. Like, Look, and that's and I think that's another one of its best tricks is you can start a place with a character and you know completely hate them, but the show, if the show wants to redeem someone, it would, and it would mm-hmm. do it in a way that is so emotionally like spot on that it doesn't feel cheap. I mean, I'm glad you said that because it's the character right now in this season that I really hope they redeem <laughs> and I hope they do it well. <laughs> um, I will talk about it uh, off, off air. I don't want to say who it is. 
Uh, but no, yeah, I mean, I never... Are you someone who watches, or did you, I don't think you are, like, watched, like, the space movies, like, Apollo 13, I'm a getter, no. all those kind of, like, space movies, right? No, I was not, I was not one of those people. Yeah, I, me I neither. Really like, space, space seemed kind of boring. It's like. <laughs> Fair. Me neither. And I know people always, like, there's always that shot of the control center at, in Houston, but, like, Mm-hmm. And then they say it off the telecom or intercom or whatever, like we've done it, and, and everybody's like jumping in celebration, and then the music is swelling, and people in the cinema are meant to be crying. Like there's there's that thing, right? And obviously, I've never experienced that, but like this show gives that to you like twice a season, yeah. and I feel like it, really it always works. works. It works every time. It works. So every I have everybody knows that like it can give you a character a hero moment or a very good emotional moment, and my quote was. You know that airplane scene from the newsroom? The one oh, that I we love? Get there. It makes it work every single time. Like, we laugh at it because it doesn't work on the newsroom. But here, it makes it work every time. I think they could be saying the corniest, most terrible thing. But you're just, I'm just like, yeah, man. I Like, go on. Murder. Keep on speaking. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it work every time. And I think that's just one of the many, many, many skills that, 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 that the the show has has mastered um, i think one of the main reasons i love this show is because i i want to be an optimist optimistic person mm-hmm. like i want to like see the good in everything which is why captain america is my favorite avenger this is so off brand i can't believe I've never, this has never come up to you captain america is your favorite this is i cannot believe this is a thing that well not my favorite avenger podcast. like that but but like in civil war i was team cap is what I, was I mean, saying. you're a team cap, like you mean you mean their chords, not yeah. with like Bucky killing Tony's parents. Yeah, well, also with that, also with that. Oh, also with that, also with that. So I always divide Civil War into two. I think there okay. should be like there's a pre-reveal. Um, like the accords is one thing, and then who killed Tony's parents on that thing. I am with. I've always been with Cap for the accords. I don't yeah. think you should give that to government. But then, yeah, <laughs> I can't really be with Cap regarding Bucky's per- Bucky killing Tony's parents. That doesn't even make any sense. He's a grown man. He <laughs> Who's a grown man? Tony Stark. He so should, he should get over it. He should really get over it. <laughs> he, should get like, over, he should. He should get over it. <laughs> Did Bucky kill his parents by himself? No. <laughs> well, if everybody was alive, to, he would kill them too. Look, or... look, Bucky was a gun. Yeah, I, I don't think... And I think, you know I think it's, guns I think don't Bucky, kill people. That's true. People, people kill people. So if you want uh, to ban Bucky, fine. But but that doesn't mean Bucky Bucky didn't kill your parents, man. Um. Uh. Anyway, but okay. I actually, do not know you like Cap like that. That's that was interesting. Oh no, I love, I, like Cap. Cap. I love Cap. I love Cap. Yeah. Enough. And I think it's because at the heart of it, he's he's just an optimistic guy, and he wants mm-hmm, everybody mm-hmm. to be the best. And I think I think I I really resonate with that. And this show does that. It has that in spades. It it has a lot of heart. I think that's the that's the thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For all mankind, yeah. has it has a lot of heart and is also just an insanely beautiful show and <laughs> good characters, good storytelling. It's really beautiful. Um, okay, just a bit of breaking the fourth wall here. So at the point of recording this, I've already recorded next week's episode six discussion with Angel. Wow. And I only, I only mentioned this because well, I mean it's not like. We mentioned it, we it like two days ago. But I only mentioned that because she made a point on her episode, which I, I think bears repeating here. And she says, like, the reason she loves this show is because, like, you can see the budget. Like, you can see the Apple TV budget in the show. Like, yeah. they, they, did not, yeah. they did not spare yeah. any expense. They are not you wasting it on, on getting Steve Carell and John Hamm to do rubbish on your TV screens for 10 episodes. They are using do it. We want to, do we want to just... Op- speaking... Oh, actually, John Hamm... Is doing a role worthy of his talents on Fargo right now. You know, I don't that's know what he was. I want to watch it. I don't know what he was doing or what they made him do on the morning show, but on Fargo right now, he's doing a role worthy of his talents. Um, ah, oh, morning show man. Will you be there for the next season? Probably. Actually, I'm I don't know. There. I'm gonna be there. So the way the way they got me back this season was bringing in John Hamm, for and they could probably Harry. they could. Oh yeah, I know. I didn't. I didn't know she was in until much later towards like closer to it coming, out. coming out. Like yeah. John Ham, I knew it wasn't when they announced it. So the, this morning show season was probably for me better than season two. It is. Because like 
let's but let's go also, on a five. It's also quite bad. I mean, I apologize to any Apple TV Plus personnel listening to this because we're on one Sorry. hand we're praising for all mankind, like all mankind is, is to the, the best heavens. that no one is watching. But yeah, yeah. Let's, re- let's, re- let's remind that. But at the same time, we have to be objective about our thoughts on the morning show. Yeah. Uh, also, <laughs> also, every time I watch the morning show, I just want to go watch the newsroom. <laughs> so the morning show. Something. At a point, at the point, it was batting an incredible fifty percent, which I've never seen happen before. Like, it was one episode is great, one episode is terrible, one is great. I'm like, how is this possible? How is yeah. how are you guys doing this back and forth? And then they got to halfway in the season, and then and they just, they just gave up. Just, yeah, once January six happens, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Once we watch up. that, once we get to that January six episode, it's just like this is no longer. You so can't. Do you know what I just remembered now? What? I just remembered now. What? There's an episode that was on the brink for me because of what happens with Greta Lee's character at dinner. Mm. And I was like, I was like, this is actually very interesting. I just remember that there was no payoff to that. No, no, there was I just remember the right now as we we're recording, I, be, I became sad. There was no payoff to that ha- happening. Reese Witherspoon, Jennifer Aniston, John Hamm, Nicole Behari, Greta Lee. Future Oscar nominee Greta Lee has an incredible sequence where she does something like you, you can see everything on her face you're like oh wow and then just for the next six episodes no payoff no no follow through nothing on that just a different storyline anyway <laughs> anyways shout out shout out for all mankind the best yeah. you know what thing Apple so, TV has some bangers um, so Apple TV yeah. has a lot of bangers and I think we've established that like we, a we've talked department. about this a few times yeah, yeah. I think I think it is pound for pound the best streaming networks when it comes to the quality of the shows I think I think like Matt proportion. just has a has a bigger head start on them. I mean, I'm not counting anything that is on HBO. HBO. Oh, okay. Well, so you that is not for streaming. That is oh that's just HBO. So if it's a max only show, maybe we can. So count what? That. We can count Sex lives of college girls. <laughs> banger. <laughs> yeah, but not um, for all mankind level of banger. It's not. It's not for all mankind. Is there anything on Max that's approaching it? Um. That is Max. I don't think there's anything that's Max only. That show that we love that they've cancelled. Oh, God, I'm forgetting the name. The one that was Anna Kendrick the first season and then... Oh, Love Life. Love Life, yeah. Th- that was, was that, that was Max only, yeah. That was Max only, yeah. Was is Gilded Love Age Life. Max only? Or is that HBO? Ooh. I think that might be HBO. Hmm. That, that is a big budget for a Max only show. Hmm. I'll double Fair. check. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like, they're just... Pound for pound, I think. I think Apple TV is pa- the best. Pound for pound, they definitely have... They're the most interesting. Mm. Like, they're, like when you have... You, you have an array of, like, Silo, which I think you and I agree was, like, good, but we expected more. 6.5. And, like, yeah. but, but there's... 6.5 is, is so harsh. What would you give Money Show? Money Show? Three and a half. <laughs> Three and a half. Oh, you see, three and a half mixed Maybe. news. Three and a half means like you need to even act on this. I don't know. Three and a half out of ten is no, just no, so bad. We get to three and a half because the acting is so good sometimes. Okay, like, fair enough. Like so what? Like, but Billy, I feel like Billy Cutter but... should just be like one on his own. That, that is that is one. Like he's Nico he's, Behari. He's incredible. Nico Behari is great. Um, but yeah. Hey, here's the money show. Just makes no sense. Money show writers, do you want an advice from a podcaster who knows nothing about, has never made a TV show in his life, so he's probably very stupid. But he will, knock on wood. Knock on wood. We are very pro-feminist, and I, I, I know it's against the point to say that we are pro-feminist, but I just want to say that we are pro-feminist. But I think your main character should be Corey Ellison. I, yeah. I'm not saying that, I, I feel bad saying that you should remove your two female characters and make Corey Ellison the main character, but he is your best character on that show. <laughs> and the show is always best when the story goes revolves around him oh. i have never cared about either jennifer aniston or respectables with the spoons troubles as example my father i call them by their actors names and i called yeah, Corey I by his character's that. name I so like names. <laughs> um bradley jackson and and doesn't matter jennifer ah, aniston <laughs> actually blank so anyway but yeah that's just that's just <laughs> me um uh, okay but yeah i mean apple tv slow horses Silo, which can always get better, like you guys said, yes. Foundation has got better now. Foundation. I don't know what the, I don't know what the <laughs> vibe is on of... God. What's the vibe on Godzilla on Monarch? I think it's 
fine-ish. So I think I it's really batting that. around a six as, at, at the moment, right? Like, it's, it's like... good enough to watch. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to watching it. But that's because, again, things on Apple TV just look ridiculously really good. Great. Like, it's good to watch. Um, but, like, I think in terms of story and stuff, it's not quite there. Anyways, yeah. I'm, I'm watching. Yeah, their investment in British talent and British actors, obviously, Slow Horses, um, Bad Sisters. Um, oh, Bad Sisters is incredible. Apparently, this is in two. No, apparently, they're not really the season two. Hijack. The which, Insomniac story is also a British one. The one Stay Up. I haven't, I, haven't, I, haven't got, I haven't got to that. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't watched it yet, but Stay I've up. heard okay things about it. Hmm. But well, I think yeah. even things that they're doing in the comedy space, like shrinking, shrinking, last yeah, so like, yeah. Uh, those were things um, that the big I door prize. Like, yeah, so it's it's enjoyed. like like comedy with so much soul. Heart. Like it's mm-hmm. not even heart. I think I, I think at that point it's soul. Like it's it feel it feels like a real thing. Was the was the so demarcation? What? Heart and soul? Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. You asked. So I think heart is. And if we're using the, the shows that we've we've talked about, so Hearts is like it makes you strive for an ideal, right? Like you 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 watch it because you know they're fighting for something, and it's like optimistic and hopeful, whatever. That's Hearts. Mm-hmm. Soul, I think, is you connect with either the main character or a few of the characters, and hmm. you go through everything they're going through with them. So I think Ted Lasso was such a soulful because man, especially the first season. Mm-hmm. Some of the conversations he would have with his wife, like it would be, and then it would just break you. Um, and I think shrinking is able to hit similar notes, yeah, especially in the beginning. Newsroom, heart or soul? Newsroom is heart. Yeah, okay, that goes in the last thing. Which, which optimistic should? Well, not be? really, because it was also kind of just fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> the newsroom was just fantastical. <laughs> Oh my god! Uh, which one optimistic should we watch? <laughs> Nobody's optimistic anymore. Have you looked it's around? It's so dark. Yeah. Jesus. I can't um, even turn on my lights right now because of cost of living crisis. That's true, bro. What's that to be optimistic about? Okay. Um, before we wrap, before we wrap up, I'm gonna just go through some of the statements. I have it on my notes. Hyperbolic statements we've made, and um, I'll save that one to the end because it's yeah. Okay, I've done the. You hit all the characters. Um. I had this one during season two, episode season two, no season three, episode one, where I go, are astronauts cops? Is this propaganda? <laughs> oh, and it was and to be fair, in my defense, you asked me like you asked me why I was saying that. I was like because like they were showing astronauts as competency in a the crisis. They're like because basically something happens and the private sector cannot fix it, and then the astronauts basically go and like this is not happening, but I could. Swear I was hearing like the American national anthem playing behind them as they were as they were fixing the problem. Uh, so yeah, so I was like, is this propaganda? Um then there's a conversation we have where I say to you, you are probably more willing to forgive characters that commit murder than cheat. And you Correct. reply, Yes. And I go, Hey yo, one is a literal crime. And you go, Yeah. And the other one makes me feel bad inside. <laughs> Do you still stand on that business? I'm stand. I'm stomping on that business, man. I'm here. I mean, I'm actually much more likely to forgive a character that does literal Surprise. murder. Um, okay, and I say that obviously this show is good as space drama. So the final real statement is something that we've we've kind of flitted around a lot on this podcast because whenever we and I talk about it, it usually comes up. Um, but you and I were talking about oh my, this was season one, sort of season two. And then we said, oh, I think I said, actually, I don't think Netflix has put a show that, is, that has gone past one season in the last three years that was as good as season one of For All Mankind, which is basically a show that has come out in the last three years. So not about Stranger Things, not The Crown, not, what else is it? Ozark was running at the time. A show that is like in its infancy, but has gone past one season that was as good as for all mankind it's a very weird parameter but you get you get what we're yeah. trying to you remember what we're trying to say yeah so it was something yeah. like we couldn't use squid game for example because it only had one season only one season yeah we couldn't use queen's gun because of a limited show we couldn't use stranger things because it was before that basically an og yeah it's yeah so we're just basically like Shout yeah that like house. sorry if you haven't watched if you haven't watched haunting of hill house you should watch it 
and that's funny because we meant, and this is at the point where you don't know what any of the Mike Flanagan, and we're like, oh, people Flanagan. seem to really like the Mike Flanagan show. I think Dark was another thing that we put out as an, as an outlier. Um, but yeah, it's just like that. Netflix, has, like, what is the Netflix show that's like, that has come out since 2019? That is as good as For All Mankind. That is a long running show. Again, the Netflix executive listened to this, I apologize, but it's just the truth. Yeah, I don't think there's any. Is it Cake? The floor is lava. Maybe one of those two. <laughs> Probably not. Nothing <laughs> really. Um, but yeah, just again. Like... Come out. <laughs> Fuck, love is blind. <laughs> <laughs> love is blind is the one. That is the one. <laughs> but yeah, I think I was, just, I was again. I was just trying to like praise like the whatever Apple TV Plus is doing. Um, yeah. In... It's it's good to say something like that to contextualize the achievement. Yeah. Because and I guess, look, they, nobody's I think they, watching this show and it's a fucking no one, banger. No one's watching this show. I, I think, obviously, if I'm being honest, I'm sure they'll have different, like, Netflix have a different argument. They're like, Apple doesn't have the same financial headache that yeah, Netflix is yeah. dealing with. And that's I like, yeah. From today. yeah. Yeah. Um, when you're competing with Apple and Amazon, you kind of really have to, I guess, well, recontextualize your. Amazon are not even competing anymore, are they? They're just doing whatever they want. They just do whatever they They're want. They're just doing whatever right? they want. <laughs> yeah. They are making shows based on what ChatGPT thinks. Oh, uh, what what Jeff Bezos wants to see in his Lord of the Rings show. Anyway, um, so you're most likely gonna be back for the finale. I will probably be back for the finale. Um, you're gonna be how back you in January. How are you enjoying this season so far? Um. Okay. So. Again, I'll try to avoid any spoilers, but like this season, yeah. a lot of they are big. This is the first. There are big changes in this season. Big uh, structurally, just the way the show is put together. Like, oh, this big is actually change. very different. So, big. I never didn't enjoy it, but for a while, I was like, uh, okay, what's the, what's the thing? Yeah, yeah. Reel I, me I, back in. I I agree. I think I, mean, I just watched an episode, episode that was yeah. like. Yeah, I don't, I watched an episode now that I was like, oh, okay, I'm on board. This is it. And it, again, it's like, this guy's not to do a second half of the season. Like you said, they know how to do premiere, but like they know how to push you to that final final episode. So yeah, I'm very, very on board. Um, I don't know if it has the highs of like, but isn't, this is an unfair comparison. It doesn't have like a season two. Yeah. Um, Some parts of season three. Like season two, there was a some russia american stuff i was going on i was like yeah, oh i didn't know really the do. most exciting of sorry all, the most action, action drama time. of of, yeah. of it yeah so but yeah no i think that's i think i'm i'm at a point if you asked me this two weeks ago i would have been like uh, i'm not sure if this shows did we just like it because we binged it kind of situation but now i'm like oh, okay no 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 i think i'm on board I think yeah, I'm on board with it. I agree. I, I, I struggled with the first few episodes. Not struggled, but it, it wasn't... It didn't, didn't have hit some ginger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It didn't yeah. hit the heights immediately that I was expecting it to, but man, I've watched, yeah, up to episode seven, and bro, boy, are we back. We are back. We'll never be more back. Um, we actually never be more back. <laughs> I have no idea what this episode is going to do, like this podcast episode. This could be listened to by like 10 people, like literally. Uh, but if you listen to this, if you watch For All Mankind, well, please come back for... Le- First of all, let us know. Like, let yeah, me actually put that watch For All Mankind so I can talk to you about it. But come back and listen to our episodes um, in coming weeks about future episodes. And if you don't watch For All Mankind, really hope we've convinced you to watch it. If we haven't so far, just watch the show. Watch the show. Just, it's not our just, fault that we're bad at this. Yeah. Really good at just watch the show. It's also very difficult to talk about a show, four seasons of a show without spoilers. Like, without it, any spoilers. You guys yeah. don't understand how difficult that is. Like, it's quite difficult. <laughs> And I think we've done a very good job of avoiding spoilers in this episode. So, yeah, I don't know. Check it out. It's Christmas. If you're, if you're looking for stories to watch, just put on For All Mankind. If you're by Season 1, Episode 6, and you're not involved, I know that's like six hours, and that might be a lot to ask, but if you're not invested by Season 1, Episode 6, then I'll be very, very surprised. Because I think this show has something for everybody. Unless you have a terrible time, um, what they call it, attention span, and you can't listen for 60 minutes. In that case, we have to... Just go be, watch it. Yeah, like, Quibi was made for you and you didn't you didn't subscribe. So but if you're a normal adult, then yeah. I think you enjoyed the show. <laughs> because that's everything else, yeah. family drama, space drama, work drama, everything is just the action. action. So mm-hmm. okay. Um yeah, thank you very much. Thank I'll you for having you. me. See you in a bit. We have some fun end of year recap episodes planned. We do. Um, We're gonna do Banky's What 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 should I say now? What I guess 
antenna wrapped. I don't know. Antenna <laughs> wrapped. What? <laughs> I don't know. Like, there's no one thing you watch TV on. I was trying to yeah, say yeah. Wrapped. yeah, fire stick wrapped. Fire stick wrapped. Oh, I love that. But then that's you know, you're giving Bezos money. <laughs> you're giving Bezos no free giving ads. Bezos um, no free ads. Bezos. Stream, stream you wrapped. <laughs> Give it a, illegal. Oh, it's like an illegal streaming store where people watch TV. Oh, I don't do that. I, I yeah, didn't mean neither. I was like, pay for my. I'm just saying. I know because I have to put my. I have to put my ear on the streets here. I have to do the work. Fair, fair. Like I'm a reporter. I need to know what what the people are listening and how they're doing their work. You're a journalist. Just, you're right. Yeah, yeah, I'm a journalist. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> me and Ronald Farrow. What's the difference? Um, okay. You and okay. Bradley Jackson. What's the difference? <laughs> <laughs> Bradley Jackson, man, lost her accent in two episodes. Um, <laughs> do you know I forgot about that? <laughs> Oh, I love that this episode was just us saying, well, mankind is good, but also, like, fuck the morning show. <laughs> so, in case you thought we're being paid by Apple, let us let you know no, we are no, not. No. We have our integrity. No. <laughs> what is good is good. <laughs> what is good is good, right? And at that point, I'll leave it. Um, yeah, thank you very much. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Um, thank you for listening. Please share with your friends. Please rate and review if you're still listening this far. And join us next week when I'll be joined by Oscar winner, Daniel Kalia. Bye, guys.